Alright, let's grab the hawk, and we're gonna do a little lesson here. How to handle the mud first, but we're not even gonna get it on the wall today, but we'll show you how to pick this stuff up. So to the bucket, and the pail is the best place to keep your mud because of the fact that it stays nice and damp and well sealed. That's all the mud we need on the hawk for now. Something you need to learn about this, if you give it a shake once it's on there, it makes like a suction cup. Look, then you can hang it upside down, and then you can go ahead and grab it. Put it over the other part of the drop, upside down. It sticks there and stays there. The whole thing, but give it a little shake, and then it makes like a suction cup. And that's kind of nice because then you can decide where you need it on your trowel. There's another tool we need to use: a four-inch knife. That's for the little inside corners. That there is just a pull on the side and side swipe it makes a triangle on one side so that when you work on the corner, you get the mud on the proper side of the knife. Wipe off and go to the opposite side and do the same thing and make this little triangle. If you know how to do this with this knife, it serves the purpose for all three coats. So not a bad lesson to learn. Start with that and take it from there. The Art of Tape and Drywall videotape will show you how to get your tape on the wall and how to do your coats without having to sand so much. Bye for now. I'm going to take you for a tour. My name is Lori Desermo and this is the Art of Taping Drywall. I have truly a fancy basement here and I'm going to take you for a walk around it to show you all the unique things that I will be dealing with as I plaster it up. Come into the big open area and here we have what's called a coffered ceiling. That's when the ceiling steps up a little higher and these these will be light valences, so there's rope light that's going to be going inside of here and shining towards the ceiling. Nice slope here. We have corner beads put on here, and we have a fancy L-trim, rounded L-trim, to put up on the top. As we progress, I'll show you the stages on it. Let's take a walk. Here's the second one, and between the two, they are, in my opinion, absolutely beautiful. Love these ceilings. They add just another dimension to the basement. If you look this way, you'll see a set of shelves. They're also made out of drywall, and round corner beads need to go on these shelves. As you come around, you'll notice on the back side of this wall, there's actually another set of shelves. So, they want them made out of drywall, I can put corners on them and make them out of drywall. They'll look great when they're done. Now, as we move this way, <clears throat> this is an extremely large room, we move up this hallway, and this basement, is uh, very large. Um, from here, we'll go into this closet area. If you come around the corner, there's a lot of shelves, and these are drywall shelves on this wall over here. They all have to be taped. Corner beads will be installed top and bottom, and they're all round and bull nose corner beads, and all three coats. Taping second and finish, and finish the corner beads, and uh, make them look nice. It does take time to do, but drywall, you'll see in the end, it really, really looks nice molded into it. Over here, they have another base, uh, bedroom. A bedroom over here. So yesterday, I got partway through the taping um, in some of these walls. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to come to this wall, we're going to tape up some butt joints, and the factory taper joints, where the paper wraps around the drywall, and I'll show you how to deal with those. I'll also show you how to coat screws, and how to tape up inside corners. Um, at this point, I'm going to have to get to work, so I'll grab some tools, and uh, we'll get started on the first coating of this wall, and show you how to move that mud around on your, on your hock, and your trowel, and your knives, in order to do this properly. Welcome again to the Art of Taking Drywall. I am your host, Laurier Desarmo. First lesson, taping. Butt joints, that's the ends of the sheets that come together, usually the cut ends. Paper wrap joints, factory joints down here. We treat them a little differently. And what you're going to use for this one is your trowel and the mud control on your trowel to place it on the joints properly. So let's get started. I got my hop and trowel. I'm ready to rock. So we'll scoop some mud from the pail. And this was transferred into the pail from a plastic line box. That's enough work and mud for me to work for a couple of these drywall joints. I gave it a little shake. There's that suction cup thing again. Mud control matters. It makes your life easier. So, let's set this up. Front hand on the trowel, upside down, 
load up the center, that's how much mud sits on there. And we turn around, and we start at the top and come down. That's loaded up. What I did was lay my trowel flat to leave the mud there. Now, since we're doing this, we're going to go to that bottom mud joint and set it up at the same time so that we can wipe them both at the same time. So here, I let my trowel come around. That's a bad hand. Just in the middle of it, I'm coming in shy of the floor. And again, my mud's all loaded up there one shot. Uh, it's because I've been practicing, I can do it in one shot. But now we put this down. I put my trowel in the mouth down, and we've got to deal with the tape. There's a crease on the back of the tape, the pointy part of this tape that goes towards the wall. So, I can see at the top where the joint is, I can see at the bottom where the joint is. We want to place this in the center. I'll stop one inch short of the factory joint going across because that will actually take care of the rest of the tape in there. And butt joint is set it up too. So, I'm going to knock some tape and we've got it on there and at the bottom I can see where it goes down where I was in short so I know it's nice and straight. Now we go back and pick up our tools and it's time to wipe these. Now, if you put your trowel on it and pull, that tape will slide with it. We don't want the tape sliding. So we'll take the hawk and hold the top of it. Start from the center. I'm tilting the trowel way up because I want to flatten this out. Again, going that way and then once. And I'm pretty happy with the way that's taped down. We're going to do mud again. Here I'm going to hold the tape at the bottom and make my way up. So I use my hop and hold it at the bottom, tilt that trowel up. Not as smooth as I like it to be. We'll go from the center, tilt that trowel up. Now I'll go to the bottom and we'll just push nice and hard for the whole thing. I'm tilting the trowel up for flattening that tape out. That's all you need to do to tape it down. Make sure that you have enough mud on that joint in the first place because mud glues the tape down. If you're missing mud, you will have bubbles. We don't want to do that. Next step here, we're going to do this paper joint coming across. Here's mud control again. It's the top tip of my trowel that I'll be loading mud on to put it on here so that we don't have mud this wide trying to do one coat. So upside down, and that's the way I load it up. Now I'll come to the paper joint and start pulling it across. Run out of mud. Mud control, tip of the trowel. Load it up nice and thick. And now, I'll move a little faster, because you do know how this works. And we can't take all day. We grab all the papers, we can't take all day. I'll grab some more mud. Mud control techniques. Make sure that you can move. Grab all the paper moving. You have to be able to go quickly. Very satisfied with the way it's loaded up. If you look closely, it doesn't look beautiful right now. It's the mud's just there. Now it's when we put the tape on there. So I will find the creases and start at that end. Again, the pointed part goes towards the drywall, the pointed part of the tape. So, with my finger, I feel where the two pieces of drywall come together. Over here, with my finger, there's where they come together. That's where I want to put that little pointy side of the tape onto. So, we'll quickly move along. With my finger again, I find it, and then my other hand pushes it down tight to the board just to make life a little easier. And all the way to the end. Now, I can stop a half inch short at the end because the width of the tape, when we corner tape, will be joining that piece of tape going across. Again, I pick up my tools. These are tapered joints. You don't have to worry about how hard you push, you just have to tilt that trowel up and push hard because it will always leave mud behind that tape because it's tapered. There's a, there, there's, it's about a three-eighths of an inch instead of a half inch and that tape sits right into it. So let's tilt it up hard, really high, and I'm pushing hard. I didn't have to hold this tape because it's so long I'm not going to drag it around it anywhere. Tip of the trowel like that to clean off the other side. Let's tilt that up and push hard. You keep on going. Keep on going. As long as that mud's not going down below your trowel, you don't drop any on the floor. I just did that little clean off the other wall. Back in. I'm just going to come back for my satisfaction. A flat. Push it down again. Completely first coated tapered joint. Now, once that is done, these butt joints 
sit higher. A tapered joint doesn't bounce a child around. It goes back and forth. Part of my first coat, and not all tapers do this, is simply a trowel width on both sides. So I'm laying it down and I want the mud to be there and then we'll reduce it as we go. So, pushing the tip of the trowel against the board, back of the trowel against the board. Now come here and tilt it right up. And here and tilt it right up. You can still see the tape, but we got a oh, about an eighth of mud on either side of that tape, which helps flatten it out. Uh, less shrinking in the second coat, less chance of seeing that hump later. So at the same time, we might as well go down and take care of this mud joint. Now on moving the mud, I go twice to fill up the whole trowel. So I actually pick it up twice for mud control. And we lay it on. Now, for all my, there's a couple of screws at the end here, so I just went and coated them. And after that, I'm going to make sure this side gets completed. Okay, skim against the board on the tip of the trowel. And tilt it for the whole thing to come up. Tilt it and the whole thing comes up. Don't like the way that looks, I'll just flatten it a little bit like that. That'll do the trick. There's an intersection that we coated many times in the next two coats after this. So we don't have to worry about that. That's how the tape goes on butt joints and tapered joints. In the next clip, we're going after those inside corners and a real fast, efficient technique of doing the screws. Bye for now. Welcome back to the Art of Tape and Drywall. My name's Aurier, and I'm hoping that this helps you out. We're about to do an inside corner. This time here is with a four inch knife and mud control techniques matter. That little pull and triangle thing Opposite side pulling the triangle is exactly what I do every time I apply mud. So, let's get the mud on these corners. There's the crack in the sheet that was, uh, that, that was installed after was this one. So they've taken mud and pre-coated that crack. What I'm going to do is plaster up the side or put the mud on the side that the knife tends to dig into the crack first. Triangle. We'll load it up. I'm laying the knife down to load it up. This way here, had they not pre-filled the crack, it doesn't matter if it goes right and slides back behind the drywall. The second side is the side where the crack is, and it makes it disappear without going into the other drywall on the other side. You'll see it more with the cracks at the bottom here. So I'll turn around, because my back against the wall is the way to do this triangle and the way to load this corner. So quickly, I'll load it up, this side here, we load it up, and then I'll show you the folding of the drywall tape. Now, if your mud control isn't that great, and you're very, very wide with your mud, when you go to wipe, it will pass your, your four inch knife and sometimes fall to the floor. So we're just going to go like this, tilt that up, and do a cleaning wipe, still leaving two inches of mud from the edge to the corner for our tape to go on because our tape is less than two inches. So, put this on the floor, grab your tape, put your hand on the back side. You don't want paper cuts. So you don't want to fold it and rub your fingers on the front side. So here is a point on this little tape. And I'll fold it this way, but the one that's doing the folding is at the back, just like, just like washing a knife in the air with your dishes. It's the back of the knife that you put, the safe spot to put your fingers on to fold it. So we'll just fold it up to do the corner, and it folds very well, and then we go and place it. So, I place it at the top, maybe a half inch short of the ceiling, because the other corners will be coming to it. And then I work my way down, and bring it an inch short of the floor, the baseboard actually meets it there. So, there's my tools, and now it's a matter of wiping this piece of table. So I go to the top, and I'll put a little bit of mud on the end of my, my knife, to make it slide on the paper very well. Tilt that knife up, push hard, and take it right to the bottom. Turn around to the other side, borrow that little bit of mud just to make it slide better, and go to the top and tilt that knife up, and push hard right to the bottom. If you have to, wipe off and just clean up your baseboard at the bottom a little bit with a couple of little wipes. It's nice and clean and actually ready for the next coat. No sanding required. The other little lesson that's part of this is the screws. People spend a lot of time just going like this 
place for the screws, but it always leaves a little hole. So, when you apply for the screws, you apply going up, tilt your knife up, wipe it clean. Don't leave a buildup on it, it causes saving for no reason. First coat on the screws, just to film, just like first coat on a corner beam. So, we'll do it again. Mud goes on, pushing up, clean. It doesn't leave a hole. So, a drywall taper moves a little quicker. So I'll just make my way around, and we'll get these screws coated up. Two directions, two directions, it saves a lot of time, and you just run your way through. So, and if you are a professional, you must move this speed or faster to be able to do this job. So, nice. We just keep coating. Once they're all coated up, we will have the first coat done on this wall. I've got other work to do in this basement. I have this whole room to do and get coated up today. So, that's the first coat of the screws. Even though there's trim and wood going around these, give these one shot, even if it's near where the trim is, so that you make no risk at all of the trim not reaching it. In which case, it makes for less touch-ups later on. That's it for now. Um, corner beads, other parts of this first coat, you can find in my other videos. The next thing you'll see, I think we're going to go second coat some butt joints. I've got another room that's dry. I think we're going to go second coat a taper joint because I've got another room that's dry. Same with the screws and same with these inside corners. You might get a kick out of it. We'll see you next time. Good morning. My name is Lori Gazarmo. Welcome to the Art of Tape and Drywall. Today's lesson is about second coating. Now, second coating of butt joints, taper joints, screws, and inside angles. And I'm going to show you exactly how this works. You're going to have to do it in two seconds, mind you. First thing we're going to do is attack these butt joints and put a second coat on them using this large 16 by 4.5 inch trowel. So we'll start by scooping up our mud and we'll get this moving. So I need to load up the hawk very well. This is the technique coat. This is the most difficult coat to do. So if you can get a handle on it, you've got a maze to be able to take care of your own drywall needs. So let's load up. Again, the mud control is very important. Let's load up this trowel and load up that butt joint down here. I'm loading up the whole thing. You saw the way that was done? Go to the bottom and as you're coming up, you flatten the trowel out. Not enough mud. Let's go around some more and let's load it up again. Right up to that joint. The other side the same way. And then what we do is reduce a little bit at a time. So that means I'm not going to tilt the trowel right up to take a lot of mud away all at once. I'm just going to press on the tip of the trowel to feather it off. So I borrow mud. I'm going to feather it off against the board. Go back to this side. Borrow some mud. I want to bring it down a little lower. And I'm pressing on the back of the trowel to feather it off there. Now I'll take a swipe up the center. Now there's a bunch of little bubbles and little lines and stuff in this, in this joint. But the tape is hidden. So the job of the first coat is glue down the tape. The job of the second coat is hide the tape. So I'll go back. And because I'm laying this trowel down, I can go over it many times without taking all my mud away. And we're going to call that the second coat. The tape is not seen through that coat, which is absolutely perfect. The finished coat, the job is to take away bubbles, lines, and everything left in the second coat. So, I'll grab some more mud, we're going to quickly do that joint and the one over my head. So, I might as well hold up. I'm going to give myself enough mud to work with. Move it around a little bit, you'll take a few little bubbles and stuff out of the mud by mixing it or moving it around. So, let's do this one. Front hand this time. So, upside down, load the whole thing. Come in. And we're leaving the mud there. I'm laying this trowel down. Even though I'm pushing hard, I'm actually laying it down. So I'm satisfied with the amount of mud loaded up, now it's reduced time. So I'm going to press mostly at this end, the tip end of my trowel. Feathers it off against the board. Now I'm going to press mostly at the back of my trowel. Feathers it off against the board. Last swipe is the center. Now there is a draw line here of mud, another draw line there. No big deal, we just do a little scrape before finished coat and we continue on from there. So organize my mud. <coughs> and we'll get a bit of this butt joint in the ceiling. 
Now, they've been flattened out. That was part of the pros uh, uh, procedure on the first coat. So, it makes this coat go easier. I'm just scraping away any little bit of blood. It's been sanded. That's it. So, let's load up this trowel. Let's get this ceiling joint done. So, I'm leaving the mud on nice and thick. And I go at least to the taper joint that crosses it. Now on the back of the trowel, I just loaded up the back because we're so close to the corner, that's all I needed there. And now, press the tip against this side when I do this side, press the back tip against that side, put pressure on that side. So we go back, more mud, bring it back into the corner. Here the same way, bring it back into the corner, it squares it up. Now the tip's getting pressed, and the back of the trowel is getting pressed, and then I'll take a swipe for the whole thing. Now, any imperfections in this coat, you don't have to get that picky because the finished coat takes it out. Those are three butt joints done for you. Now I put this trowel down. Normally what you do is you go around the uh, whole basement or your whole project and you get all the butt joints first. It gives them a chance to set up before you cross them at the factory joints. So, here's my other trowel. I'll show you how this works. It's a very, very similar procedure, except it's a little trowel, and you don't have to go as wide because the tape sunk into the tapered part of the joint. So, I will grab some more mud, and the first joint you're going to do in this corner is the one going forward. So it's this one here where my knuckles are going to hit this wall, going forward that we want to do first. So, I loaded up properly the whole thing. I'm laying it down to leave them up there, load it up some more. I want to go a long ways with this joint, as long as possible anyways. So there it's nice and thick, doesn't look that great yet, but again we do a reduction. So tip of the trowel, back tip of the trowel. Roll some mud to get the corner filled up, flex the top tip, feathers it off, flex the bottom tip, put pressure on the back of your handle, and keep that trowel laying down, don't tip it up too much. This way here you can go many times over without taking all your mud away. That trowel is laying down really, really good. And all I do is keep reducing it. And I'm pressing against the top. And then the whole thing rakes down. And I'm having that trowel rake right down. That's as smooth as it needs to get. There are a couple little draw lines and bubbles in that. Not a big deal at all because the finished coat, that's the job of the finished coat. So don't get any pickier than that. Now I'll just do a, a little bit of a backhand on this one here, uh, just to bring it to the end of the joint. Now, we won't go over those joints right now because I haven't given them maybe half an hour to set up so that we don't make cut lines in those joints when we go to do this joint going across. So that's why we let them set up a little bit. So back of the trowel, we'll just come to the edge of that joint. That's on the back end. And we just came to the edge there. Now I'll go back, borrow mud, bring it back to the corner. Now, tip is flexed against the board. Bottom tip is flexed against the board. And then, rake flat for the whole thing. It does not need to get any prettier than that in this coat. That is the job of the second coat, hide that tape. Um, I'm pretty satisfied with these butt joints and taper joints at this point. I'm not going to run around the room to do it. But in the next segment, you'll see me doing these inside corners and the screws. And I'll show you the techniques on that. Bye for now. I'm Larry Desarmo and I'm back. This is the Art of Tape and Drywall. This is a six inch knife that's used for second coat on the screws. When you buy your six inch knife, if you lay it against the wall, you'll see an arc in it. That allows you to leave a layer of mud on your screws without leaving edges on the other sides. Technique, very similar to the second coat, except it's a bigger knife and there's more flexing involved. So, that's all I did was load up with mud this way on the screw. It's a combination of flex and lay down to determine how you leave mud on these screws without leaving edges on the outsides. Now, if you do leave a little bit of edges on the outsides, the finished coat, which is done with the trowel, take some of that away anyways. So there will be no sanding on these screws before the next coat. Now as a professional taper, I'm going to quickly run across this wall and do these, these screws in a professional taper kind of speed. 
So, on and off. And there was a chunk of mud. I'll take it away and repeat. Repeat. Um, the edges of the window we won't worry about as much anymore. But let's just quickly go through. And this way here, there's a layer of mud on these screws without edges on the two sides. And as you can tell, it moves very well. And it's the same technique used as we used in the four, except we're going a little larger and a little wider. So I'll just quickly get these. And when we get back to the other corner, we're going to do some inside edges. Which is those inside corners when I get to the corner where my left is. So. Now I have all the screws. This is how I buy time on my jobs for my butt joints to set up. I go and do all my butt joints first. I go around and do all my screws next. It gives them a chance to set up so that I can cross these joints before I get on to the next step. So while I'm loading a six inch knife, you know how it works. It is a matter of flex. Flex and what you lay it down, that leaves the mud in the middle and tapers off the two sides. That's what we're looking for. So, putting this away, my inside corners are done with a four inch knife again. The techniques with the four inch knife are the same. It's all about making that little triangle deal. So, it's all the same, depending where we need the mud. Now, what we wanted up here is a matter of one, one tape away from the other. So, one joint away from the other. The ceiling tapered joints are going across this way. So those factory taper joints are going this way. That's the corner I want to do first. So again, this should be set for me. Even though it's not, we're going to do it anyways. Because I know how to fix it later. Which I'll be showing you on the finished coat. So it's loaded up really, really well. There's bubbles and lines in it. This is more of a finish because there isn't another coat that goes on this afterwards. I will make the repair of that little line that I'm making across my butt joints just because I didn't get the time to set. There's the start of that. That's the peculiar angle. Now, coming up to it, we will be doing the wall angle. And I do my little triangle load up again. And bring it right down. We're just going to stop at the joint itself. And then flex the tip of my knife against the drywall. Do a cleaning wipe on that side. Now square up my knife. So square it up. Not much overflow onto the other side to get into the way of our next coat. That's nice for that. That's all we need to do with it. It is very smooth. Now as you can tell, there's one at the ceiling, one at the wall. This one here. So they didn't actually overlap each other. They met each other. And on the finished coat, we do the exact opposite of what we just did here. We take the opposite corners. So I'll put a little bit of mud, come back, and I'll skim the bottom part of my knife against the board. Come back up, and go it again. Now, the job here is to hide that tape. That's nice and smooth, the tape is hidden. I'm very satisfied with that being my finish, because the one side, that is my finish. When these joints set up, we'll come up with the angles and go right across the joint so that we're not cutting lines like I did with this butt joint. That gives me a spot to give a coat to on my finished coat to repair where I cut a line because we didn't give it, a, give it enough setting time. In a small room and you have to work, you just go anyways and you repair things as you go. Um, at this point, I think I'm going to give you, I'll pick up a trowel. There's one corner beat and these are bullnose corners.